uncbands.org. Hi, my name is Michael Chris, and I'm the Low Brass Professor here at the University of North Carolina. And I want to talk today a little bit about a, a problem I hear often in younger students. I even hear it in my older students, and it has to do with articulation. So, it's often those kinds of attacks that I get to hear young kids do. And I think this is just a product of the ensembles that high school students in particular are involved in, that marching band where we need that kind of front to a note to get the, the sound to really speak to an um, a audience. However, when you get to concert season, it's not going to be useful to have your trombonist articulating in that way, mostly because they might have a nice chorale passage or something that needs greater clarity rather than volume. So I like to use a couple different kinds of articulations with my younger students, and the way I help them develop those is through the use of consonants and vowels. Now we're all comfortable saying toe and do or ta and da as we learned back in our, our days in middle school band. Um, but there's a whole world of vowels and consonants that you can use that will change the way these attacks sound. And I'm going to break them down into three areas. One, if you have that marcato attack and you're, you're, you have a, a big a brassy section where you need lots of trombone or even brass sound, you might consider instead of using uh, just a ta or a to, try out the, the consonants and vowels of though, do, or through. Now it's important to keep in mind some people are actually going to tongue through their teeth on this and that's probably not advantageous for your whole band so be on the, the lookout for that. And a great way to do that is to just have your students articulate air in that hard marcato either the, though, or through. Uh, all put the tongue in a different place for me and try them out. And if you're looking around with a casual glance, you're going to see that kid who's through their teeth and then you can make a correction about that. However, for some people, one of those th, does, though, or throughs will get that sound you're looking for. A nice clear front to every attack. A uh, second uh, articulation or consonant I like to think about is when I'm looking for good clarity in a generic staccato passage or a passage that has no uh, defined articulation mark whatsoever, just good articulate playing. For those, I use the standard ta's and toes and twos, but to yourself, say a ta and a toe and a two, and I think you're going to notice that the position of your tongue changes with the change of the vowel each time and all the students are going to have a different effect too. So you can have your kids work a couple of different things, not only playing a scale exercise like where you can listen for that clarity in their attack, but sometimes just articulating here is useful too. So going something like is, is really great at sort of hearing what the problem is because oftentimes when I get students to do this, I'll hear things like where they're really using the middle part of their tongue to articulate, or something more like a la. I'll hear things like that, too. I try and correct that right away when I hear it and get them to get that really clear T sound of The last vowel sound I use, or consonant sound I use, is for legato. And for these, I use a standard do or do, but I also use an N sound like no. And you might think that will give you too soft of a sound, but it might be just the right kind of articulation for a student who needs a really nice soft legato sound. Here's what a do sounds like. And I'll contrast that with a no. A little bit softer and a little bit smoother. And this is going to change from student to student. Another thing I uh, like to work on with students is the overuse of tongue. I find most students by default will use too much of their tongue. And so a great way I've found working with younger students on this specific thing is to get them to 
think of their tongue working in the same way that their hand can work when they're trying to get somebody's attention. So if you were wanting to tap somebody on the shoulder, you'd use a finger or two, and that would be something like a lighter tongue. But sometimes you want to get somebody's uh, attention with a little more, more insistence, and you might use your whole hand. It just gets them to think about tonguing in a way differently than this abstract inside the mouth thing that, uh, that young kids tend to do. And you know, you can also work heart attacks that way too, sort of the whole, whole fist punching sort of sound. Just getting them to think about their tongue in a new way will hopefully give you a, a whole variety of articulations that you can use on the marching band field, on the concert stage. If you'd like to discuss some of these techniques further or want some clarification, I'd be happy to talk with you. I can be found on the web uh, at music.unc.edu. Thanks.